Okay, so now that I've covered everything in the develop area, I'm going to move on to the report area. So this area kind of speaks for itself. This is where you will generate different reports and use that data to inform instruction, to share with families. Um, it can be used for a bunch of different things depending on what report you use. So that being said, I'm gonna talk about just a couple of the most helpful reports that are in TS Gold. The first is this right here, this class profile. And what this does is it compares information about children's skills, knowledge, and behaviors to widely held expectations for their age or their class slash grade. So how I've been kind of saying throughout all of these videos that you need to select pre-K four for the class grade. This is part of the reason why. Um, so it compares their behaviors to widely held expectations for their age during a specific checkpoint period. So this is really helpful to plan for small group experiences. It gives you a, a quick view of where all of your children are at in regard to the expectations for all the different objectives. So this report will help you plan intentionally if there's a specific objective you wanna focus on or if you see a trend with you know, a certain group of students that may need help in one area. Um, this is the report that you'll use to identify that. So I'll show you really briefly how to generate this report. And I'm going to use um, a real classroom just because I don't have children in my classroom, my fake classroom that I've created in TS Gold. So you're going to want to make sure you have the correct um, information in there. Yours won't have as many options as mine um, because you just have you should have your classroom. Then you're gonna make sure you're looking at the correct checkpoint period. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you select this again here, blue pre-K four. And now here is the biggest probably uh, parameter that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you select. Selecting a finalized checkpoint level will make sure that you are pulling the most recent checkpoint information. However, if you were to click this first one here, all preliminary, preliminary levels and finalized or unfinalized checkpoint level, this is helpful for when it's the beginning of the school year and you have not yet completed a checkpoint. This will pull data from those preliminary levels that you have assigned to pieces of documentation for children. So once you have all of these parameters selected, you'll click generate report. And you'll see here, it breaks it down by area and by objectives. You can see where all of your children fall. And I wanna be clear as well. So if we just look at here, one C, if the children's name falls within these blue bars, that means that they are meeting expectations for their age. The, where these blue bars fall for this objective, this is the age appropriate expectations. If their names are falling to the right, that means that they are at these higher numbers, which mean that they are exceeding expectations for their age. However, if their names fall to the left over here, that means they are at these uh, smaller numbers and that they are still progressing towards expectations that are not quite meeting expectations just yet. Um, so again, this is really helpful in planning the small group experiences, making sure that if you do have children who are, for example, falling to the left of the blue color bands, that you know you are working to get them to meet expectations. And then if you have children that are to the right, you know, that making sure that you are challenging them appropriately and making sure that you're meeting the individual needs of each child. So that's it for the class profile. The next report that I wanna talk about is the documentation status report, which is right here. So this report shows how many times an objective or dimension has been associated with a piece of documentation for each child in your class. This is gonna be really helpful for you because um, as you may have already seen in the, um, the previous video, 
regarding policies and updates and there is a new change regarding documentation so each child is required to have at least two pieces of documentation um, per week and you are also required to have at least one piece of documentation per objective per quarter so this is going to be helpful in tracking that information so again i will walk you through quickly exactly how this looks And I'm going to continue to use the same classroom just as an example. So you can do it by child or you can look at the whole class, looking at specific checkpoints. You're also going to want to check these two. This is going to tell you how many pieces total each child has. And then if you have any areas that are missing documentation, clicking this will ensure that they still show up on this report. So you'll see here, you have the child, pretty easy to follow. This tells you how many pieces of documentation are uploaded with um, that are connected to objectives and dimensions that are not connected to dimensions and objectives and then with preliminary ratings. So that is when you go through and you level that piece of documentation. And this, these charts here will be helpful in identifying um, if you have that one piece of documentation per objective. So just to be clear, what I mean by that is one is an objective. A, B, and C are dimensions. So in order to have one per objective you, per quarter, every quarter there should be at least one, one piece of documentation for one. That can be one A or one B or one C and so forth. So same with two. You have two A, B, C, and D. It doesn't matter if it's A or B or C or D as long as there is a piece of documentation for this child for one of these two A, B, C, or D, that will be fine. The reason that was implemented is just to make sure that you are taking a more holistic approach to documentation and making sure you're documenting um, you know, the whole child and not just in specific areas. So that is the documentation status report. The next one I wanna talk about is the development and learning report, which is right here. This shows what each child is currently able to do in relation to the objectives and dimensions that you select. Um, this is also helpful because it highlights the, the next level of development and learning. So it, it's really helpful. This is a really good report to share with families. Um, whenever you're doing your family conference, it gives a really easy way in plain English what that child is able to do and what they should be able to do next. So I will just run through a quick example of this report as well. And again, you're going to want to make sure you either select all the children or the one specific child you're looking for. Making sure you're selecting the correct checkpoint period. You can select all of these. You can select one or two. Again, I mentioned the distinction, what this includes um, earlier. And again, this, this is up to you on how you want to present this if you're sharing it with families. It's not recommended that you show objective and dimension numbers only because they don't have enough information to really know what that means. You know, if you tell a parent, your child is doing really great, you know, they, they moved up to level five in 1A, they're gonna look at you like you're crazy. Um, they just need to know what their kid can do. <laughs> So you'll see here, this is what the report looks like. Um, over here on the right side of the screen is how you switch the view of different children. And it breaks it down pretty simply. So again, currently the child is able to do X, Y, Z. And in plain English, next, this is what this child will be able to do. So it, it breaks it down really easily for each area of development and learning. So the last report that I want to talk about is the assessment status report, which is right here. Um, this enables you to see whether you have entered finalized checkpoint levels by area and by objective and dimension. So this report is gonna be helpful for you, not so much for instructional purposes, but to make sure that you're meeting your requirements 
This is gonna make it really easy for you to determine where you are missing finalized data for your checkpoints. So every quarter, checkpoints must be finalized and completed and finalized. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I just wanna point out to um, we, and when I say we, I mean the partnership, we have had conversations with teaching strategies representatives about this discrepancy you see here. Um, you see all of these bars show 100% completion. However, it, this is only saying 78% are completed. Um, so I would worry less about this percentage that you see here. Um, they don't know why there's a discrepancy. We've tried fixing it. I, I'm really... I don't know how to fix it. So this number is less important than what you see here, as well as what you see when you scroll down. So this is gonna identify every box that you see should have a green check mark. If you are not seeing a green check mark, that means that it is not finalized. This little table right here is going to be really helpful and figuring this out as well, seeing what you, if you don't see a green check mark, what you do see, um, this will help identify what that means. This is gonna be important because, again, one of the updated policies is that there will be more accountability in regards to completing your checkpoints on time. Um, so you are going to, same as every year, there's you know a deadline for which you have to complete them, but now, in addition to that, your directors are going to have to sign a form that states that you've completed them on time. And that form will be due the same day that your checkpoints are due. So it's going to be really important to make sure that you are aware of your progress throughout the checkpoint period and be cognizant of the checkpoint due date. Um, so again, this is just a really helpful report to do so, to keep, you know, make sure that you are meeting your own requirements. Um, and I just switched back to the report page here. Uh, I'm not gonna go in depth, and we're not gonna talk about in depth um, the other reports. You'll see there are quite a many additional ones. If you do wanna see and kind of play around with these other reports, on the left side of the screen here, you see view report images and view report descriptions. So if you were to click this, it will tell you exactly what each report does. So this will be helpful in determining if you want to pull a report, what exactly each one will be good for. Um, you also will have this information included in the TS Gold and Creative Curriculum um, Implementation Support Toolkit that I will be sending out to you as well. Uh, so that is everything on the report area.